News Watch starts now. Good evening. Distracted driving could now set you back with a fine of over $200. Alberta is taking action against the dangerous but common habit. Our Maddie Skinner joins us live from our news centre with more on that story. February is the month where the Edmonton police focus on distracted driving, and they kicked it off with a demonstration to drive home their points. It's a less than stellar run for Parker Thompson, an indie car racer by profession. He is used to tight turns and quick stops. Okay, so stay on the course. Today, however, he has a new obstacle, texting while driving. And stop. So what happened to our pedestrian here? Uh, died. Well, it's like Thompson's lucky. This is only a demonstration and the pedestrian in question is made of cardboard. The demonstration is part of a campaign to bring awareness to the danger of distracted driving and the severity of its penalty. The legislation now calls for a $287 uh, fine, as well as now three demerit points onto your driver's license. The legislation was put in to combat the nearly 30,000 cases of distracted driving reported in Alberta in the last two years. As a province, we know that distracted driving is unacceptable, dangerous, and puts everyone on, on the roads at risk. While 97% of distracted driving cases involved a handheld device, drivers can still get in trouble for other things, like reading things in the car, drawing or writing, personal grooming, or even entering information into a GPS device. No matter what it is, taking your eyes off the road for just two seconds is your chances of getting into a collision. Put away the phone. Nothing is as urgent that it can't wait until you can at least pull over safely in traffic or to get to your destination. Police warn that the $287 fine is only the beginning. Careless driving while distracted can get you an additional $400 fine and six demerit points. Maddie, are hands free devices safe to use on the road? Distracted driving laws don't extend to hands free devices or to other in car activities like talking to passengers or smoking. Just how prevalent is distracted driving in Alberta? In a driving survey last year, 53% of responders said that they drove while distracted. On top of that, over 87,000 people have been convicted of the offense since 2011. Thanks, Maddie. That's Maddie reporting live from our news center tonight. Nate Newswatch, the next generation in news. The Alberta Federation of Labor is calling for changes in protecting convenience store workers in Edmonton. Quick stop and go convenience store has been robbed a couple of times last December. The store owner was a victim of armed robbery followed by a break in robbery three days after the incident. Sorak Bayan, the owner of the store, feels they are not protected by the city. I wish they could put uh, some extra cameras uh, by the city. It's sad that thing happened, okay? Uh, but uh, it makes you strong. The Alberta Federation of Labor is calling for a regulation wherein all night retail employers are required to have more than one person on duty. A report on sexual assault released by the University of Alberta recommends new steps to reduce incidents and provide greater support for survivors. Multiple reports la uh, list sexual assault as one of the most pressing issues facing universities and colleges in North America. One in five women and one in 20 men will have experienced sexual assault by the time they've graduated university. This is often very uh, embarrassing or humiliating for the survivor. Uh, there could be cultural impediments. Uh, it could be a case of um, uh, fear that they will be criticized for their behavior. Sexual assault is an underreported crime, with only 10% of sexual assaults being reported to the police. Many survivors have a fear of not being believed or being blamed for an action someone else chose to do to them. The Edmonton Police Service is reaching out to high school students in hopes of educating them on the use of fentanyl. Fentanyl here is a hundred times more toxic than morphine. 
An assembly was held at Austin O'Brien High School on Thursday morning about the dangers of the drug fentanyl. In 2015, there were 272 recorded deaths due to fentanyl overdose in Alberta alone. The EPS feels it's extremely important to reach out to Edmonton High School students about the drug. This isn't somewhere else it's happening. It is happening right here within their age category and the people they know, whether it be in their school, sports teams, anywhere. These are students that they know and people they know and it's affecting them. EPS plans to talk to every high school in Edmonton to make sure all students are educated on the drug. For more information on fentanyl, visit www.drugsfool.ca or call HealthLink at 811. The Public Health Commissioner's report released last week showcases drinking habits of Canadians. 4.4 Canadians are at risk for chronic health conditions including liver cirrhosis and cancer. <laughs> Almost 80% of Canadians indulge in alcohol consumption in some capacity. The health, health risks can be substantial. Approximately 3,000 babies are born in Canada with fetal alcohol spectrum disorder every year. There is no safe time, no safe amount or no safe type of alcohol to drink while pregnant and we really want women to um, plan their pregnancies so that we can avoid normal social drinking overlapping early on in pregnancy. The most at-risk demographic of mothers with FASD affected children are professional women who are educated and earning high incomes. FASD is considered the most common developmental disability in the Western world. Advanced polling took place this week for the upcoming Ward 12 election. This past week, the Meadows Recreation Centre allowed voters to get a head start on this year's Ward 12 election. The election features a record-setting 32 candidates. Advanced polls are set up to ease the traffic expected on the election day and let voters who have already decided cast their vote. We just felt like it was really important to come out and, and make sure that our voice was heard early. It was a convenient time to be able to, to make it in before all the crowds started coming. But uh, with 32 candidates, I believe it is, in our riding, it's, uh, it's really important to make sure that uh, the candidate that we believe in the most is represented as much as we possibly can. Just over 3,700 residents voted during the advanced polls. Polls reopen on February 22nd. Just when Edmontonians thought 70 cents per litre was cheap, gas dropped even further. The price of gas hasn't been this low since March of 2002. Edmonton drivers were filling up this week for 59.9 cents a litre. Edmontonians say it may not be a good thing for the economy, but they won't complain. Kind of like it's scary because you know that the economy is doing really bad but as a student it's also kind of nice because it's like twenty dollars to fill up my tank gas isn't likely to stay like this for long but drivers are enjoying the cheap refills while they can the canadian dollar is around 70 cents on the american dollar and that's forcing many people to opt out of flying anywhere over reading week Reading week is this upcoming week, and a lot of students take off on holidays with family or friends. With the dollar as low as it has been since 2003, travel agent Melissa Tolmy says business has slowed down this year. We've noticed that airlines are putting a currency surcharge into their taxes, and we are finding that that is affecting it. Um, the one thing, though, that we have noticed is because of the way the dollar is, people aren't traveling as much because of what's going on with the oil industry. Travel agents like Melissa hope our dollar jumps back up soon, so business can as well. The Edmonton Canadian Forces Base is participating in a large virtual training exercise designed to prepare soldiers for future deployments. Operation Unified Resolve is a scenario of a UN-mandated mission to provide military support and humanitarian aid to a country experiencing crimes against humanity from their government. This training allows military to virtually practice movements and maneuvers of units and troops. This exercise is, is critical primarily for the leadership of this uh, brigade. It allows us to consider uh, some of the, uh, the stressors, some of the scenarios we might face in operations abroad before we actually commit 5,000 soldiers to the field. Everything from attacks during the night, media releases of casualties and even chaplain services are performed. 
The only difference is there's no actual soldiers on the ground. The Nate Culinary Team is prepping to compete against professional chefs at Emirates Salon Culinaire, an international cooking competition taking place in Dubai. Team members will be given 60 minutes per dish to prepare both an Asian sea bass and a beef dish using only secondary cuts. The team has developed their own recipes to be evaluated on the basis of composition, originality, taste and presentation. But it is very intense in the sense like you know you are you have a time frame to do the recipe and also you have thousands of eyes are watching on it and you got uh, judges with the clipboard walking around the kitchen asking you questions. So it, uh, it, it does make uh, you nervous. Nate last competed at the competition in 2012, where they returned with six silver and four bronze medals. Members of the team were chosen based on their aptitude, attitude, and willingness to learn. A group of students at the University of Alberta are up on the roof of the Tory building. They are making heights of making a weather station as a requirement for their course. The Environmental Earth Sciences degree gives students a first-hand experience in building weather stations. Weather stations are used across the globe to measure weather parameters. Professor Jeffrey Cavanaugh says this is a great learning experience for the students and they have an edge over others. Confidence of having done it. If they're asked um, by their employer, we need you to go out and repair the station. They will have, they will have built it so they can repair it. They, um, they get the confidence to better understand the materials they've learned in class. Kavanaugh says that they won't change the foundation of this course <laughs> because it's improving and moder modernizing the class. Coming up after the break, international students often struggle with moving to a new country. We take a look at how the Nate International Club is helping students adjust. We hold lots of events to give them opportunities to meet others. Hey, I'm Chelsea Jensen and coming up in sports, I've got the Ooks men's and women's volleyball highlights. I let you know if the Ooks men's hockey team keep their hot streak going. And I, well I tried gymnastics. Coming up in weather, be prepared to cuddle with your Valentine this weekend as Sunday is looking to be well above zero degrees. I've got all that and more after the break. We've been getting some snow this week. I'm heading over to Jasper for Valentine's Day, so here's hoping the roads are clear. You're lucky. I have to work on Valentine's Day. Brian, why don't you take it away with the weather? Well, although it's been a snowy couple of days, things are looking up going into Valentine's Day. Let's take a look at the forecast. Starting in Calgary, you're the hot spot this weekend as you'll be sitting at 7 degrees for a high tomorrow with a low of minus 5, partly cloudy with more sun than cloud. As we move into Jasper, if you're wanting to ski this weekend, this is the time to do it as it's going to be mostly cloudy with a high of 0 degrees and a low of only minus 8. As we go to Fort McMurray, You'll experience a 20% chance of flurries with a high of minus 2 and a low of minus 9. So you're the cold spot in the province. Coming back to the capital region, we'll start with some morning sun with increasing cloudiness in the afternoon with a high of plus 6 and a low of minus 1. So be ready to cuddle with your valentine outdoors. As we go into the records, it was 11 degrees in 1907 and minus 41 in 1904, so that was a chilly Valentine's Day. As we go into our averages now, normally it's, we're sitting around minus 3 and a low of minus 13. That's been your look at weather. Back to you. Nate Newswatch Weather is brought to you by NR92, the station for the students. For Canadian students, it's hard to handle stress. But imagine what it would be like for an international student who's away from home. Nate International Organization offers services to help students adapt. Jane Legaspi reports. Eric Estrada taught me how to make piñatas. Piñata originated in Mexico, and it is a container full of treats. Eric has been here in Canada for three years. He is currently upgrading and he's a peer mentor at Nate International. 
While he was in Mexico working with the Air Force, his family is here in Canada. Being away from his family is hard. That is why he chose to move here. When I was back home, I was alone. And it's the same language. I was without my family, and I, I know how hard is it. You came to a new place, you don't know anybody. Be, don't be able to communicate is scary. You know a lot of things, but you don't know how to express them. That's hard. Nate International Club has been helping students to adapt easily. We also help them to make friends on campus. We hold lots of events to give them opportunities to meet others. A Nate student advisor says she was once an international student, and that's her main reason on helping. Help them to settle and have a fantastic experience while they're pursuing their academic uh, goals. The Nate International Services is helping Estrada in adapting. I became involved in the International Student Center and that helped me a lot with the talking because I can talk to everybody else around. Settling down in Canada is hard, but for Eric, it means a new door of opportunities. For Nate Newswatch, I'm Jane Legaspi. This week in sports, our Nate Ooks in both volleyball and hockey took on the Augustana Vikings. They did, and our men's hockey team is now sitting at 27-0 in the league, and they're obviously in first. Chelsea, tell us more. So the Augustana Vikings came in with absolute vengeance in all categories, and as for the record with the Ooks, yeah, they're not letting go anytime soon. The third place Augustana men's volleyball squad were, look, were in town looking to approve upon their 13-5 record against our fifth place, Nate Ukes. But the boys in white weren't willing to let that happen. A few points into game one, Zemlak serves one that appears to be long, but Khalil couldn't get out of the way fast enough, which scores one for Nate. Candy sets up 6'5 Burkhart for the kill, which Reiner takes to the chest. For the final point, Zemlak pounds the ball through the Nate to the Vikings defensive wall, giving Nate the 25 to 23 game three victory. The Ukes take this match three games to zero. Well, we're a pretty old team, so everyone just enjoy, is enjoying the competition and playing these close games because, yeah, there's only a few left in the season, so we've got to get ready for playoffs. I don't know, everyone likes winning games, like I said, so if we can have a good season. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's always fun. <laughs> the closely matched Augustana Vikings and the Nadukes took to the court in women's volleyball action. Let's go! The start of the game, Natasha Ng spikes the ball into the center of the court. Augustana's Bates finds the open hardwood. In game three, Rigoloff spikes the ball right past Luke Smith. And Candace Hughes finds the baseline for the point. The Nate Ukes will take this match three games to two. I feel really excited that we won. Um, obviously, it didn't go the way we wanted to at the whole time of the game, but we pulled out a win. We definitely needed it. It'd be nicer to see him do it three. It's a little easier on the nerves, but you know what? It's, it's, they they got to work, right? It's, it's cool. The Ukes men's hockey team, just like in volleyball, played the Augustana Vikings. The Vikings currently sit in second place with an 18-4 record, while the Ukes sit in first place with a 27-0 record. If there was a team for the Ukes to have lost their hot streak to, it would have been the Vikings. The Ukes captain Scott Fellnermeyer wastes no time. Fellnermeyer shoots blocker side on Augustana's Harry Friedman. Just two shifts later, Sam Waterfield will take a shot on net, and it gets deflected by Tanner Dunkel. Looks like Concordia Thunder's Nathan Smith and his team came out to watch the game as well. On to the third period now, the Ukes Charles Well takes a clapper from the blue line and the puck will find its way to the back of the net. The game ends 4-0 for the Ukes. And the Ukes again are sitting 27-0 in the league. Anytime you beat Augustana, they're, they're a tough team to play and uh, all four lines work hard, finish their checks and they don't make it too easy on you, so it's a good feeling. Yeah. For the past three years, the Edmonton Eskimos have hosted their tailgate party for their first preseason game. Since the Edmonton Eskimos first preseason pre game is at home this year, they decided to go all out. This year, they partnered with Porga Palooza. On Saturday, June 18th, when the Edmonton Eskimos play their first preseason game, there will be a free 
three-day community barbecue festival. To accompany it, the festival is said to attract over 45,000 visitors. So we thought, what better way to start the season by getting full speed into the minds of Edmontonians by having this fantastic three-day festival. Tickets for the weekend passes went on sale this past Wednesday, but will still be on sale up until the event. The passes get you into the concert area, and with that, you receive a ticket to the Edmonton Eskimos' first preseason game. First thing right. we're going to learn today on the floor is a dive roll. And dive so roll is for my one of the end zone challenge this week, I thought I'd try gymnastics. My younger sister's in gymnastics, and I've seen her do her moves, so I figured, well, hey, that doesn't look that hard. Yeah, I was definitely wrong on that one. First things we're going to learn today on the floor is a dive roll. And dive roll is one of the second progressions into a front tuck. Ready? I think so. Okay, so we're going to start just with some skipping first to warm up. Because okay. the worst thing to do is go into a sport when your body's cold. The wrist stretches were very important because the dive roll and the bar require a ton of wrist action. Okay, so My first here. event was pretty basic. It was just practicing the motion of jumping, but I still did need a demonstration. My turn. Yeah, go. nailed exactly. it, of course. Now time to add a little roll. The next thing that we're going to do with that is we're going to go over to our double mini, and you're going to try it on your own. All right, time for the big girl event, the double mini. <laughs> so my two corrections for that okay. would be in your set, so your straight jump, you kind of gave in in your elbows a little bit and started to bend, okay. which brings you lower and also we're pulling to your right side. That was the best cool. one. That was pretty good. Getting myself chalked up and ready to rock that bar. So like this. First, Brittany taught me caps. <laughs> Just like that. Whoa. Well, now that I got the basics down, let's try something. Good. Your three caps. One, two, three. And your faster backup circle. Okay, so the pros oh, make it look 100% like easier than it actually <laughs> is. So that's been your look at gymnastics. Thank you so much for helping me, Brittany. Oh, no problem. All right. It's too bad the Summer Olympics are this year. You could have tried out. Yeah, uh, I think for the shoulders and the wrist, I'm just going to stick to playing hockey. Best idea I've heard all day. Thanks, Chelsea. Coming up after the break, we volunteered at the Edmonton Humane Society. We made beds and gave out some much-needed cuddles. We don't get any government or city help whatsoever, so we are constantly fundraising all year long. I'm Sydney Peach, and coming up in entertainment, I'm going to give you a look at two plays to check out this weekend, as well as a bunch of ideas for Valentine's Day. Stay tuned. Clothing sponsored by Elite Sportswear, bringing you 60 years of dedication. Hair sponsored by Rock Salon and Spa. The Edmonton Humane Society is a not-for-profit organization committed to finding homes for stray animals. Jesse and I gave them a visit this week to see what we could do to help out, and we got to cuddle some adorable little creatures in the process. Ah! Ah! The Humane Society needs volunteers to help with laundry, cleaning, and socializing with the animals. As the goal is to get them adopted someday, every attempt is made to keep them happy and healthy. The more human interaction, the better. We don't get any government or city help whatsoever, so we are constantly fundraising all year long to make the money to be able to do the work we do. So that's kind of a bit of a challenge, and in this economic time right now, it's hurt us a little bit, but we're still doing pretty good. The Humane Society has several on-staff vets, as well as vets that volunteer their time on weekends in order to help spay and neuter the animals. Dog walkers are also needed. There's two pretty exciting plays going on this Family Day weekend. Yeah, and if you're still unsure of what to do this weekend, Sydney Peach has some ideas for you in entertainment. Did you know this year this year's Oscars gift bag has 2000 over $200,000 worth of swag in it? Well, an Edmonton area jeweler was chosen to have her handmade jewelry put in the gift bags for the 2016 Grammy and Academy Awards. Kim Dukeshire, founder of Farm Wife Style, sent off 150 pairs of earrings for the Grammy nominees. She's also featuring her lightning bolt necklace, which will go to 30 Academy Award nominees. Everything I'm, I, m that my brand stands for is just like farm life and just simplicity and being down to earth basics. 
you know, and so many people have caught on and they love it so much. It's actually pretty simple. Dukesha reached out to the companies that make the gift bags. They liked what they saw and she was chosen. If you'd like to take a look at her wonderful pieces, you can check out farmwifestyle.com. Festival Players for Kids is presenting Disney's Peter Pan Jr. at Festival Place this Family Day weekend. A Peter Pan and Tinkerbell and the elegant Captain Hook. The play is performed by a talented cast of local children. However, the play isn't only for children. This play is for the whole family or anyone who's a kid at heart. No one is ever too old to feel young, so it's kind of never grow up. It rings true for everybody. Take a journey to Neverland with your family. Get your tickets now for this weekend. The show runs until the 15th. Show times are 2 p.m. and 6.30 p.m. Tickets are $16 for children and $24 for adults. A popular Canadian-based play that looks into the heritage of the gay community is in Edmonton this month. Two, four, six, eight, gay is just as good as straight. The Gay Heritage Project is a theatrical look into the idea of whether there's a particular heritage to gay people. Heritage is usually something that is passed on within families or ethnic groups. So the three creators of the show are wondering if there's something that links them to other gay people. The show really is us speaking about our own exploration into gay heritage. Uh, but what we hope is that it's an invitation for people to, um, to investigate their own heritage if they, if they choose. The idea of the show is to play around with this question in a fun and entertaining way. Tickets are $30 and you can visit citadeltheater.com to purchase yours for a night full of fun. Love is shown in so many different ways because love truly is unique and one of a kind. In this week's viral video and in light of Valentine's Day, we're going to look at a way that a flower company portrays love and the many different ways love can be. I love you. I love you. Don't you just love love? Just over a week of being uploaded, this video already has over 6 million views. So I guess love really is in the air. Well, that's been your look at entertainment this week. Happy Valentine's Day. Thanks, Sydney. Well, that's uh, it for this week's edition of News Nate Newswatch. Thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm.